Transformation Index of the Bertelsmann Stiftung is analyzing 129 developing and transition countries towards the normative goal of a democracy based on the rule of law and a market economy which is social politically flanked. Um, so that means um, that we believe in a societal goal uh, of a good society uh, that can be identified and that can be measured. And we do that with the help of um, uh, close to 300 experts around the world um, that are living in 110 different countries and are working in the top academic institutions of their countries. Uh, so what we would like to find out is successful trajectories towards um, transforming these countries, successful change management. What are the strengths, what are the weaknesses that countries are showing and are there good examples that you can actually derive from successful cases that might be transferable. This is the main goal. Um, now our most recent findings in the BTI 2016 uh, with country reports that date back to January 2015 are not really that encouraging. We see a rise of uh, influence of religious dogmas and increasing political instability. Uh, we see governments with less capabilities of dealing with these conflicts. Um, and we see a, a decrease of democratic equality in a lot of countries. This, on the one hand, applies to established democracies. We see um, uh, less um, uh, election rights in Latin America, less freedom of expression in East, Central and Southeastern Europe, and less freedom of assembly and association in Eastern and Southern Africa. But first and foremost, it applies to the authoritarian regimes around the world. Uh, there we see a hardening of the repressive grip of these regimes um, and in turn, we label 40 of the 129 countries that we are assessing um, as hardline autocracies. Um, and that is the highest number we have ever measured in the BTI. The Arab Spring is one of the reasons for that, um, uh, the, the repression of the Arab Spring, that is. Uh, but it is also a reaction throughout uh, post Soviet Eurasia to the Euromaidan in Ukraine. As far as Latin America is concerned, uh, we still see two worrying trends that have not changed during the last 10 years. The one is the substantial gap between the level of political participation on the one hand um, and uh, the erosion of rule of law on the other hand. The separation of powers, independent judiciary, prosecution of office abuse and the protection of civil rights has not improved during the last 10 years and in fact in some cases uh, has even, um, uh, the gap has even widened to the higher level of uh, political participation. Um, that is one worrying trend which is combined with another worrying trend and that is that the social polarization also did not stop. Um, Gini is not back in the bottle in Latin America. Uh, in some countries like Costa Rica, for example, in fact, the gap between the rich and the poor, in fact, widened. That is particularly alarming because the last 10 years were economically good years for Latin America, uh, um, with the um, boom in commodity prices um, and uh, a lot of export earnings. If in these rich years Latin American governments were not able to invest socioeconomically, uh, how can they do in meager years? That is another alarming sign. Um, the third alarming sign is that the quality of governance in Latin America decreased actually in those countries that are largest, um, and that is particularly Mexico, Venezuela, Brazil, and Argentina. Uh, mind you, this is of January 2015, so I am talking about Fernandez Kirchner uh, still. Uh, nonetheless, um, it is a great challenge for these four big countries, which also represent the four biggest economies in Latin America, to make a convincing turnaround in their quality of governance. And the obstacles are very, very great, at least in Mexico, Venezuela, and Brazil. In Argentina, with a new government, uh, one has to see how the Macri government settles in and if they are. Um, uh, willing and able to fulfill on the promise of sound technocratic governance. 
In Brazil, um, the problem arises, of course, um, uh, in the succession of Dilma Rousseff after the successful impeachment. Um, Mexico is um, dragged down by gang violence and bad governance and corruption out of the drug-related business. Uh, and uh, Venezuela at the moment has no optimistic solution side as uh, the opposition is still uh, heavily repressed. Uh, so therefore, uh, in terms of governance, this is not a positive outlook for Latin America, even though there are bright spots in terms of anti-corruption policy, for example, which advance particularly in Uruguay and in Paraguay. Um, uh, but uh, the challenge will be to combine the two big inclusive policies. On the one hand, the, inclu the politically inclusive policy of stabilizing democracy by not e further eroding the rule of law, and then the economically inclusive policy uh, by um, uh, making growth-oriented policies that at the same time uh, have a decidedly social economic coin uh, side of the coin, which includes education, health, and infrastructure.